As a student in 21st grade, I've done plenty of homework in my lifetime. I've built volcanoes with baking soda and vinegar, I've done thousands of math problems, and lately, I've written a lot of research reports. While my previous homework assignments have varied vastly in topic, range, and scope, most have one thing in common. They are currently in the garbage. Since the very early days of education, assignments for school were tailor-made to be disposable. One justification for the disposable, repetitive nature of school assignments is that they are mere exercise. In fact, one of the earliest composition textbooks is a first-century Greek book called Progymnasmata. Now, if we do some linguistic archaeology, we'll find the word gym in there. Much like exercise in a gym, the purpose of the majority of assignments is to build skills for the sake of building skills. And although the metaphor of schoolwork as exercise is familiar to us, at one point it represented a major paradigm shift in educational thought. The metaphor of exercise denotes that through effort, someone can improve. Previous educational models promoted by Socrates, Aristotle, and others held that intelligence was innate and non-teachable. You were either born noble and intelligent, or you were a hopeless cause. Given that educational backdrop, the notion that anyone can gain knowledge is revolutionary. 19 centuries later, and it might be time for another revolution. Open educational researchers created the notion of renewable assignments. The philosophical stance behind renewable assignments is to invite students to add value to the world and share that value using permissive copyright structures. While research and practice in renewable assignments is growing in the United States, much of the existing research comes from the Teacher Education in Sub-Saharan African initiative. Ideally, Students use renewable assignments to create a product that has value beyond supporting its creator's learning. In other words, students have got to leave the gym and do something with those muscles. And they have. For example, students in OER initiatives have been invited to create and edit wikis that they're interested in. They've written textbook chapters, they've started blogs, and they've shared personal narratives. Within the context of first-year writing, renewable assignments have great potential. Here's why. First year writing is often a university's first opportunity to scaffold a new student's literacy practices, and there is no shortage of demand for greater literacy amongst incoming college students. According to the U.S. Department of Education, 85% of students will take first year writing before graduation. That makes it the most in-demand class in American post-secondary education by more than 15 percentage points. Building an outward-facing mindset to schoolwork at the beginning of college could help set the pace for the rest of a student's institutional tenure. If students are invited to make their exercise useful at the beginning, they may even transfer that mindset to other classes. This presentation outlines how I'm building renewable assignments into my classroom. I look forward to performing non-phenomenological, generalizable research in the future, but I want to make sure that I can practice before I preach. In an effort to make this case study as relatable as possible to other first-year writing contexts, I'm building the open education structure around a nearly universal assignment in this nearly universal class, research-based writing. Research-based writing is a foundational component of first-year and advanced writing programs across the nation. According to the foundational 1961 study, The Present Status of Research Paper in Freshman English, the research paper was a requisite part of 83% of first-year writing courses. In 1982, James Ford and Dennis Perry conducted a similar survey concluding 84.09% of freshman writing courses required the assignment. Most recently, Kara Leah Hood revealed that while the popularity of the formal research paper has dropped dramatically, research-based writing of some form is still a requirement in 86% of first-year writing classes. Regardless of scope or prompt, research-based writing springboards students into conversation about information literacy, academic integrity, and source evaluation. Just as freshman composition serves as the near universal introduction to college level writing and analysis, the research based writing assignment introduces students to the concepts of academic research and scholarly conversation. To adapt this assignment into an OER framework, I'll address each of the five R's listed in Wiley and Hilton's 2018 paper defining OER enabled pedagogy as well as the three heuristics introduced in Mahabali et al.'s Framing Open Education Practices from a Social Justice Perspective. First, students are still expected to write a standard research paper. 
The term paper is going to be a staple for their college career, and wherever possible, I want to make sure that their introduction to the amazing maze that is a research library is with me. Once their research is finished, they are invited to adapt their research paper into an OER format using the 5Rs heuristic. Students create mini documentaries under the CC BY license that will be published to YouTube. Each documentary will be held in a shared Google Drive that is open to anyone for downloading, duplicating, etc. Reuse. As the videos are not only published on YouTube, but they are available to download, they are free to be reused in a number of different ways by anyone who wants to. Because future students in my course will use previous videos to template their own assignments, future reuse is guaranteed, even if in a limited context. Revise. This is one of the hardest items to work into the assignment. Although the assignment itself is a revision of a previous research paper, the possibility that students will revise their work beyond the demanded qualifications of the class are slim. Additionally, because the video presentation is such a complex intersection of hardware, software, and user input, it is equally difficult to build or even allow third-party revision into the framework. Remix. Each student will be invited to reimagine at least one chart or graph from their research paper into an infographic. This invites students to begin remixing data. It also paves the way for future revisions of the same or similar data sets from a third party user. Redistribute. This is the simplest item. YouTube has already done a lot of work to allow for varying copyright levels on their platform. And on their website, the cap of their outreach for redistribution is second to none for video work. Framing this assignment from a social justice perspective also requires thoughtful curation. I'll draw on the three main points presented by Bali et al. when they outlined their typology of OEP. First, the approach must be process-centric rather than content-centric. This is a real struggle with my students. Due to previous schooling, they are very concerned about what specific product will result in the best grade. So, to quell fears about grades, and to make this a process-centric design, I've adapted a form of labor-based grading contract from Inway. This allows students to focus more on the creation process than on the end product. Second, the experience must be learner-centric rather than teacher-centric. With such a technologically demanding assignment, this can also be quite difficult. Luckily, University of Michigan provides many solutions to help students access technology. Additionally, any student who feels unable to complete such a tech-heavy task as producing a mini-documentary can use their labor-based grading contract to create a separate assignment. Third, experience must be focused on social justice rather than pedagogy. And this goes right back to the introduction of the video. Although exercise serves a purpose, and gyms such as the Pro Gymnasmata serve a purpose, how much more powerful could our institutions of higher education become if they allowed students to enact change in their communities. How much more would a student invest in their education if they felt it would make an immediate impact on the issues that are important to them? How much more would students care about their assignments if they were focused on experience and change rather than simply learning what is within the assignment? And I think at the end of the day, that's what I'm trying to do here, not only with this assignment, but with the experience of this class. Issues such as assessment and research will follow after a successful pilot. And if you're interested in seeing the future of this experiment, not only the research behind it, but what the amazing students in my class are making, then keep an eye on this channel because this is where it's gonna be published. Thanks for coming. I look forward to feedback jgod at umich.edu. That's how you contact me. And I look forward to being at the conference with you and learning from you all. Okay, bye.